Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about Magic the Gathering and not, I mean, maybe as an investment, but specifically reserve list cards and specifically the dual lands. They have done pretty well. In fact, the buy list was actually at 620 earlier today and it dropped $50, but it's still at 570 These cards do hold value. Uh, there's no other way to say it that number one they are illiquid so they're harder to sell than stocks however the s p 500 due to the potential war in the middle east which seems to be like a century long or millennia long thing is spooking the market uh, the market is spooked i fully expect the s p 500 to probably do very poorly uh, in the next coming months, yet Magic cards, surprisingly, including Underground Sea, if you see from the last video, are up. You know, and they're up 10%, 15%, and I don't know, it's kind of interesting. I was talking to my girlfriend about diversifying assets and in terms of buying real estate. I do think diversity of assets is something to be talked about because... If you have all your assets in a certain stock and it goes down, well, that, that feels bad. If you have some assets that go up, some assets that go down. It's, in fact, you know, I can kind of compare it to my YouTube channel. Um, I have free YouTube channels. One of them has almost 16,000 subscribers and it's my dog channel for my Shiba Unu. One of them has, I mean, this one and Lus, L-U-S, have almost the same number of subscribers. One of them makes more money, the other one does not. The other one makes more money, the other one does not. I mean, it's always like you got to diversify what you're doing in life because not only is it more entertaining, I feel, but it also offers you safety because not everything can go down at the same time. So maybe the S&P 500 goes down, uh, Facebook goes down, ExxonMobil stocks in general take a hit. But your collectibles, for whatever reason, your dual lands, go up. And that's what I'm seeing right now is somehow, and incredibly so, my magic investments have outperformed the S&P 500. Now, I'm not talking about sealed product. Sealed product is still garbage. I do not uh, encourage anyone to buy sealed product, especially recent sealed product. I'm talking about Funder Junction, thinking they can flip it for money. It's just not that type of environment anymore. It may not never be, uh, to be quite frank with you. It may never be that type of environment again. So when you talk about what I'm talking about right now, I'm talking about cards that are liquid, um, that are as liquid as they count, and that would be dual lands. And the dual lands, for a long time, I, I couldn't really figure out who the hell was buying all this stuff if no one was playing Legacy. And the, the answer is the Fallout guys are buying it. Anytime there is an influx of new EDH players, um, outside of buying the Commander decks, should they have money, and many of these people have money because they're my age and they're kind of in the peak of earning money, um, yeah, they're going to go ahead and buy dual lands for their EDH decks. Then they're going to build the EDH deck, and then they're going to buy another dual land for another EDH deck, or so on. Because when you have money, it's like, it sounds kind of crazy, but like a dual land isn't that much money compared to their other hobbies. Rolexes, so my other channel, we do cover Rolex quite a bit. Rolex and to a lesser extent, Richard Mill. Um, I think it is this type of person who comes into the game and they buy a bunch of dual lands and they're always hungry for more as they want more and more decks. And they don't really have a budget. They, they don't have a budget. They're just trying to enjoy themselves and have a nice time. So back to the issue. Yeah, it, it, diversification is really important when you're making investments. Um, if you don't diversify, you're putting yourself in very much risk. And even jobs and security and, and so on, um, you got to diversify. Um, you know, maybe you op open this business, maybe you begin with this business, right? 
And magic is a way to diversify. Now, of course, you do not want to um, put too much money into magic, right? Um, and, you know, again, it's very, very illiquid. Um, it's not the most easy to sell. It's not the most easy to buy because you do have to authenticate it. If you no, have no idea how to authenticate it, right? There are rich people who buy dual lands and they just store dual lands forever. And that's their uh, collection, right? That is their collection. Because at the end of the day, um, they like collecting it. And I, I don't know where or where they are mentally because and why they need so many of these dual lands but they do and i had multiple people tell me hey i need to buy more of this i need to buy they're like addicted to buying dual lands and power nine I, I don't know it's maybe a display of wealth or power or who I, I i don't quite understand but there is a marketplace for these cards and they have done very well even though the stock market and bitcoin have not done well recently and you don't need to take my numbers for it. I always say this, um, you don't need to be offended by numbers. Numbers are just numbers. They're meant to be looked at and studied. Um, and yeah, the economy isn't good. I can kind of prove it. So, so I have a neighbor and they have kids. And every holiday, every weekend, they take their kids out, maybe travel, right? Uh, they haven't traveled for probably two years now or two to three years now, I think, as a way to conserve money. And that's kind of the middle class right now is no one can afford to travel. So their kids are playing on their sidewalks, their, the driveways, the uh, pole in the back, right? Um, they're not traveling because traveling is very expensive. Like, you know, you can pair a vacation. Um, now my, of course my sister and her kids are traveling because my mom and dad pay for it, but that's a different scenario. Um, most of uh, the kids I see in my neighborhood, they're not going to know Disney World or Disneyland or anything anytime soon because money is getting tighter, tighter and tighter. Again, the Middle East, it doesn't look too good there. It's never really looked great, but Looks like there might be another war, and you know America loves getting into the wars in the Middle East for supposed oil because they definitely have tons of that over there in Afghanistan. Lots of oil in Afghanistan, I heard, and then we'll build them some schools, and and then it's all you know, it's a fair trade, right? I'm being sarcastic in case you don't remember. Uh, you know, I thought the Iraqi War or whatever Afghanistan War probably one of the worst wars for all the reasons to go to the war. In my opinion, because I, I thought those dudes, their 9 11 dudes were like Saudi Arabian, right? So it's like, well, these this is not the right country, guys. No, I get it, but it was a lot of money. We can, we can debate the politics of war, right? In another video on my other channel.